Hi everybody, this is Vincent Ng of mcngmarketing.com and for this particular video, which is part one of three, I'm gonna be talking about the new Pinterest analytics. Pinterest came out with some new set of analytics, which is absolutely beautiful on August 26th of 2014. And with this, you're able to get a lot of rich data and they've actually broken it down into three different categories, which is your Pinterest profile, your audience, as well as activity happening from your website. Now, each one is very data rich, so that's why I'm creating three different videos because each one will focus on each section very clearly. It'll explain what each section is about. So let's go on to my Pinterest profile. And again, this is things that are happening on my profile. The previous analytics, you can only get stuff that was happening on your website. Uh, so this is really exciting. A lot of people have been demanding it. So the first thing you'll notice is that, you know, they'll tell you the average daily impressions that your pins make um, based on the time period that you choose. So over here it says impressions from a certain date. Uh, you can choose 7 days, 14 days, 30 days. And here's the great thing. If you're tracking the number of impressions you're making over the last few months, Pinterest actually allows you to choose dates to show you the impressions. So I can choose from May 1st all the way to finding out what's happening to August 26th. And as you can see, uh, the number of impressions I'm getting has slowly rised over time. Now, when people talk about impressions, sorry, I shouldn't say people, when Pinterest talks about impressions, they define it as any, is a pin that has been seen on any feed. Now, this is a little bit tricky because um, for me, the question that came to my mind was, are search results considered a feed as well? Because you can actually find out what your most quote unquote searchable pins are as well. So I've emailed Pinterest and hopefully I have an answer, but based on what their definition is, it's basically any pin that has been shown on any feed is considered an impression. Um, the average daily viewers, that is the unique daily viewers that have seen your content. Uh, again, that's a great metric to see, to measure, to see if it increases over time. If you happen to notice a decrease, maybe it's time that you repin more. Uh, maybe it's the wrong content and you really need to reanalyze it. So really take that time to find out what's going on. The really great thing is you can also find out what your most impressionable pins are. So again, which pins have had the most impressions in the last 30 days. The data you find out will be absolutely fascinating because you may find out your most popular pin is still a pin that you pinned from a year ago. Uh, I've had that for a lot of my pins, especially ones about advertising, tend to be extremely popular. The trap that you don't want to fall into is to assume that just because a pin has a lot of impressions and is popular, that you should keep pinning that type of content. Remember, you are a business. You need to focus about uh, focus your strategy on your business. Having people click or, or repin the wrong type of content is wasted time. Ensure that you keep your Pinterest board on strategy. The other feature that you'll find with impressions is that you're able to find out the boards that have the most impressions. So when you are pinning to an individual board or a group board, you're able to find out the number of impressions that your pins make during that board. So again, this is for your Pinterest profile. So when you have a group board, that's not saying that's the number of impressions the group board makes as a total. If you want something like that, pin groupie is a good way to go. It gives you a lot of different stats. But for group boards that you participate in, it will tell you how many impressions you've made. Now, again, you'll be surprised because you may find out that an individual board of yours actually gets more impressions than an actual group board. So at that point, you might want to consider re-strategizing. Now, moving on, you can also check out for repins. So again, you can find out the average daily repins. You can choose your dates. Uh, it's really helpful. It gives you a lot of insights. What the most repinned pins are from your account. Uh, you can you probably will notice that a lot of the repin pins also have the highest impression amounts. Uh, you can also find out again which boards of yours that you're you're pinning to have the most repins from the last 30 days. Uh, so here's one that's really fascinating is my print advertisement board. I haven't been very active on it and yet it just keeps getting repins and really it's only because of the fact that 
Uh, truthfully, it's a Game of Thrones print advertisement that's been pinned 1,800 times. So that's where all the credit goes to. Again, but you can tell that my second board, Pinterest Tips, has the second amount of most repins, uh, and that's actually really quite fascinating. The third thing you'll notice in your Pinterest profile is clicks. So you can actually go to clicks and it will tell you the number of click throughs for the pins that you're pinning. This is not the number of clicks that go to your website. This is very, very important. This is the number of clicks that you have for your pins overall. So again, you can tell again what pins have the most clicks in the last 30 days. For example, my friend Daniela uh, from 007 Marketing, I pinned one of her pins, which is 111 quick Pinterest tips. Uh, and then notice that, hey, it's gotten 22 clicks. So it, and it's actually very good considering that it's only had 315 impressions and 22 clicks. So the click through rate um, divided by impressions is just amazing. Now, you'll also notice over on here on the side is that the pin type is says R. So that just means that it's a rich pin. So anytime that you see an R, that stands for rich pin. Uh, and again, rich pins do help show up higher in the newsfeed. Again, you can check out clicks based on by the boards. So which boards are getting the most amount of clicks. So again, if you're wondering when you're posting to a group board, is it effective? Or again, should I just be focusing more on my own content? Uh, again, check out the stats on your board. Um, I'm actually quite surprised that the 31 days to a better Pinterest page has actually gotten quite a bit of clicks to my website in the last 30 days. So that means that it's a good board for me to continue to focus on. Now, the very uh, last tab you'll see is all time. And so the all time is a really interesting one. It'll tell you the most repins that you've ever had for, your, for any pin. Uh, so again, if you notice that one of your pins is in the top pins for, and I mean by your pins, I mean content that you've produced, that's an indication that you really should repin that content, you know, more often. So maybe every three weeks when you get new followers, repin that content because obviously people love it and they want to share it. So that'll offer you some great insight. Now the best in search is a little bit of a teaser. I'm not exactly what that exactly what that entails, but it says pins that rank higher in search where it gets really tricky is to find out what exactly they're ranking for. So we can only make an educated guess that certain pins are ranking high for certain keywords, but the problem is we don't know which ones. And because we don't know which ones, um, it's actually, to me, honestly, it's kind of useless. Um, so we can only make educational guess that's saying the one about Star Trek humor is that if I type in Star Trek humor, um, that it comes up in the top of search results for that word, but I'm not too sure. So a lot of testing involved. Again, if you wanna know more uh, about your pins, you can also click on the show more. So when you do that, you're able to find out a lot of your pins. I believe it is actually the top 50 pins that you're able to find out. Now, here's the thing is power pins. These are pins with a high mix of repins, clicks, and more. I don't know what the algorithm is. That seems to be something of a secret with Pinterest. Uh, so again, but you'll see that it's a bit of a mix of everything. So it gives you an idea of kind of what's popular in terms of this, this mix that Pinterest talks about. Now, something that's very easily over missed is actually the all apps feature over here. So I'm just going to go back to impressions and under the Pinterest profile, you can actually check out things based on the actual device. Really, really cool because a lot of data out there suggest, hey, you know what? You're going to get a lot of impressions um, based on the mobile device, which is true. You know, for myself, I get 50% of my impressions on mobile device. But what I still notice is that, hey, a lot of my impressions will come from the actual web. And what this tells me is that, you know what, I still need to make sure that things are optimized for my mobile, but small things such as putting my website in the pin description, making sure that I tag my own name in the pin description uh, so that people, when they click on it, goes directly back to my Pinterest site, um, that gets added, uh, sorry, that gets redirected. So again, even though there's a lot of mobile users for, for, for me, about 50%, the majority are still on web. So it's good to check out the different platforms. You can check out Android phone, the tablet for Android, iPad, iPhone, and even mobile web uh, and the web itself. So amazing, amazing stuff. 
And the very last feature you need to know about your Pinterest profile is that it's about the export data. So you can actually export a lot of your data if you want um, from Pinterest. It's in the form of a CSV file. Uh, I haven't really tested out this feature, but I've used it in the previous analytics and it's very, very helpful. So you can always do that if you like. Um, and so that's video number one of the three part series. So the th second video, I'm going to be going into how to analyze your audience. This is going to be a fascinating feature. Uh, so click on this one to see the second video. Thanks so much for joining me. And again, my name is Vincent Ng of mcngmarketing.com. And feel free to join my Pentalysis Online Academy. It's an amazing, amazing online academy where you'll get lifelong uh, access to Pinterest marketing courses.